Good afternoon. I wanted to quickly show you that there are other free images on the internet um, that are vendor supported. Uh, so you're not subject to any piracy or um, any, any laws precluding you from downloading their content and uh, software. They make this software free uh, for individuals to use to test out solutions, um, which in my personal opinion, opinion uh, only furthers the marketing and sale of their product uh, based on capability. So in this instance, what I wanted to kind of go through was um, in this course, what we have is uh, Cisco. And what we're using is a free version of the kind of vanilla um, version of their uh, Cisco iOS operating system. Okay, um, this is freely available to personnel who want to train on Cisco, uh, and that's great. So that's one option, but we also have Juniper. Uh, so for GNS3 users, I'm going to make this uh, particularly for you, since that is the um, network emulation software that we're using for these courses, and I think it's great. Um, so what I did was I kind of displayed Juniper side by side, and what I want to ch first show you is how to install it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my web browser, and all I typed into uh, Google was vjunos router install gns3. Now they make a router, they make a switch, and they also make a product called Evo, which is kind of a combo. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to their operating system. But for now, we're just going to focus on the router. Uh, you can do your own research for that. So for GNS3 particularly, there is this community forum uh, in which this GNS3 user was nice enough to supply um, the link for the GNS3 file that's needed to actually install this QCAL. Okay, now GNS3 is a hybrid hypervisor, so QCAL is natively known to Linux and their hypervisors, so um, nothing crazy there. You could technically build your own QCAL VM, but in this case, they make it a little bit more um, user friendly. Uh, and what that's going to do is take us to here. Okay, so for this, they are going to add the virtual MX and you can see right here we have the evolved which is the combo the switch which is the switch and then the router all right so what you would first want to do is come here and go to download and what that's going to do is it's going to give you the GNS 3a file which allows you to build your VM template in GNS 3 okay uh, I already have this installed or I'm sorry downloaded so what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through the installation okay now um, what you'll also need is the virtual hard drive for the appliance. So what you would do here is just type in vjunos, and the first link that pops up is the free uh, Junos OS download for labs. All right, so from here, it will bring you to their page. Juniper was just recently acquired. Um, so sometimes it, it seems that HP and their uh, synchronization is kind of led to some bugs here but what we'll do there we go i just had to refresh the page but you'll see download v juno switch evolve router and then the c junos which is their containerized version i haven't played with that one too much yet but we'll go right to the junos router all right and then from here what you'll see is the latest version which is 25.2r1 uh, we're going to use a slightly different version just because I already have it um, installed. But you, what you would do is essentially come here, click on the QCOW, and then you would agree to their terms of usage. And from there, you would proceed and you would download the QCOW file. All right. We're going to skip that for now. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and minimize this. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to File, Import Appliance. And from here, we would start with the GNS3 uh, router. So this is the uh, template that GNS3 provides. We would start there. Uh, we want to, I'm running a bare metal uh, v, um, server for GNS3. So if you're running the VM, then you would uh, install it on the VM. Uh, but for me, it's just going to be the main server. So I'll click next. Uh, this Leave this default, I'll click next. And then you can see here, now you would be asked to provide the actual um, file. So from here, what we'll do, uh, you would just 
do either import or download and it'll bring you right to their page and then once you have that uploaded to here sometimes you'll want to click refresh all right um, and in some instances where it still won't read you might want to click the allow custom files and just accept and then from there click refresh again and that will come and uh, populate up again all right now this uh, file is already found because it's already on my actual server so we'll leave that as such and then we would click next and it would say ready to um, it would say fully installed all right I'm gonna skip that because I already have it installed so um, there is some ver uh, it, it will first save to your router category Okay, and for here you can see I have the 24.2R1, so I have a slightly older version. Now, here's the thing. What you're going to do is you're going to notice when you click configure, it's going to come default with the necessary RAM and CPUs that you're going to need for the actual VM. Uh, it will have your hard drive and the disk interface is going to be Vert.io. That's a Linuxism. You want that. Uh, for your network, it comes, I believe, out of the box I believe it comes like this but if not you're gonna want to uh, switch it to vertio net PCI again this is a, a KVM Linux hypervisorism this is what it likes uh, and then your adapters it's just gonna give you 17 out of the box maybe I give that to myself I honestly don't know uh, but here's the thing in advanced what you might see is this is either blank or has some misnomers okay so if you left everything default and tried to boot up the VM you might run into some issues this is important uh, down here for your optional settings because this is the actual settings that you're passing to your QEMU VM uh, for where it should target okay so you might have to play around with this but what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, I, I'll, I'll make this available and try to copy it into my uh, lab that I submit for this first project. Uh, and then, you know, you'll just have to kind of play around with it. But um, this isn't the only product that does this, by the way. <laughs> okay. And then once you hit OK, uh, you would just start it like any other VM. You would click Start and then right click to get into its console. So what I want to do from here is I already have two instances of this running. Um, so what I wanted to kind of show you was the difference in what we're looking at. All right. So for Cisco, um, it's quite simple. Um, what you're normally going to get on Cisco is if I did a show run, um, this is the running configuration that we were given, uh, inside of the lab. So it basically gave us our network for our fast ethernets, right? And then it told us that <coughs> it wanted to run, uh, router rip version two, and then here's our networks. Um, and that is pretty much it. We didn't configure SSH or anything else like that. But the uh, assumption is that we're going to be able to get traffic through our RIP network um, and all that fun stuff. So right here, if I did a show RIP, um, I think it's IP RIP neighbor, neighbors uh, show RIP hmm. show router. Sorry. Rip database. From here, we can see our networks inside of our actual database. Um, so we are good there. And then obviously our RIP network is via 3.2, which is our neighbor. Okay. So we're we're good there. Now for Junos, it's a little bit more complex, but not too too much. All right. Um, all I did again was uh, from here, I just went to Google and I did um, rip or um, what did I do? Uh, rip Junos configuration. Yep. And then the first link that popped up kind of walks me through the basics of how to actually configure this. So I looked at their topology, took note of their interfaces and networks. And then from there, I kind of just changed happy to glad in my topology. So to make it uh, easy. Uh, in Junos, what you'll want to do right off the bat, so <clears throat> when you first boot up Junos, it's going to uh, put you in the Linux shell. All right, so um, if I do this, I can see I can have uh, Linux commands like I normally would. Um, so that's that's just the normal operating system. Now, to actually get into the Junos operating system, what I'm going to want to run is CLI. All right, and then from here, I can do things like show... 
uh, configuration uh, display set. Now, here's the thing. Display set just means what commands have I actually ran to set things in place. So in other words, it's almost like um, any of the commands I, I ran in conf t on Cisco. All right. So from here, it's going to give me a list of what I did. So the first thing that you want to do is you would run, want to run a set system root authentication uh, and then you would put plain text uh, password. And what that would do is it encrypts your password for you. Um, but that's one of the first things that it, uh, Junos demands that you do when you log in. The next thing you do, because you're going to be getting a lot of DHCP options, is you would want to go into either configure. Uh, the other way you can get into this is you can type edit. It's the same thing. Um, and what you would want to run is delete chassis auto image upgrade. All right. And what this does is it, it's going to get rid of all those populating messages that comes into play. So you press enter. And um, from here, you uh, it's saying statement not found because I've already ran it on this. And then after that, you would have to do a commit. All right. Uh, so any configuration changes that you make on Junos, you have to make sure to commit them. So if you're inside of your configure mode and you want to run operational commands like show commands, in Cisco's case, you would run like a uh, do show IP int brief. Uh, here, I would do a run show configuration display uh, set. Now, I say set and I showed you that before, but there's other variables too. I could also do XML. I could do JSON. So I can show you one of those. They're a little bit harder to read, but when you want to look at the hierarchy of things, they come into play uh, pretty good. So the XML kind of runs you through all of the different commands that are available to you and where they sit in the hierarchy. Now this looks pretty intimidating. It's really not though, it's just XML. So there's a ton of spacing for absolutely not much of a reason. It almost reads like a uh, giant picture on a text file. <laughs> all right, but uh, for the router rip, what we would do is we would uh, do a display set here and just the, the simple simple configuration that I had to do was I had to configure IP addresses on my uh, actual interfaces, right? So um, you can see here that we have unit zero and family inet. Uh, that's because Junos allows you to do a lot with its interfaces. You can do sub virtual interfaces. Um, you can do uh, a family of ISO, so you can assign the protocol rate to the interface. You can do MPLS operations. It's it's pretty it's pretty extravagant actually. There's a lot of flexibility in Junos. All right, now for RIP. All I did was I set my protocols, all right, to export and advertise my routes through RIP. And then from here, I made sure to identify my RIP neighbor as myself, uh, because this is the interface uh, gig01 that I want neighboring to my other RIP router to form my RIP neighborships, okay? Then from there, I set some policy options. Um, this essentially is kind of a Junosism, but it's more for if you do this on firewalls and, and things of that nature. So um, policy options are s often extra, but not really needed. But in this case, it was in the configuration file um, or guide that I looked up online. So I figured I'd do it and it worked. So what I could do now is I could do a run show rip neighbor. And from here, it's going to tell me exactly what's what's happening and as you can see it's using that multicast address that we expect uh, which is 224.0.0.9 um, and that's what we want to see uh, because that's how rip uh, advertises its neighborship all right um, so yeah um, there is limitless things that you can do with junos um, it is free and vendor supported, so it's just one other option to use if you want to use it. And I hope this at least sheds some light and uh, maybe helps someone out in the future. All right. Thank you and have a great day.